Torment that tears my heart apart The shattered pieces that fell apart Can you help me mend it back once again? Hey James, how are you? Uh, considering, How's life? Considering what shape the world is in today, uh, I'm doing okay. Actually, yeah, I can't complain. Um, okay. Well, I just lost my brother-in-law um, hmm. the other. That's why we had to postpone this. But you know, it was a different situation. It was cancer, so uh, it was you know it was a, it, more prolonged than it needed to be. So we were really relieved, really more relieved now that it's kind of happened. And that was yesterday that, uh, because that's why, why we planned it yesterday, but it was delayed for today. That's the reason. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, other than that, no, I'm doing fine. Doing fine. Thanks for asking. Well, uh, my condolence uh, by, by these. Oh, for, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's start uh, right to the questions. Uh, it's a little bit... Uh, a little bit of background history I like to know. Uh, so what what were the b first bands you have heard or what made you to become a musician? So what what what, what made you to become a musician? Uh? Well, there's two different two different ways to answer that question. Yeah. Uh, probably to to um, I guess light the fire or that gave me the interest in wanting to be a singer. I guess yeah. go back as far as the Beatles when I was a kid. And then I think by the time I got introduced to Alice Cooper, you know, maybe it, it seemed a little more of something that I might attempt one day. But it wasn't until the British heavy metal uh, scene and I say British slash German heavy metal scenes, you know, so, you know, early Scorpions, UFO and... Uh, Rainbow, and of course, when the one Black Sabbath put out Heaven and Hell with with Dio, then it was yeah. Then then that's what actually grabbed me by the throat and made me grab a microphone in my first Garage Band. <laughs> I uh, I know you have something special with Europe. I know that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you come so often and you play so often in Europe, and you have so many contacts here and. Uh, Everybody, you know, many people personal, and many people know you personal. I know that, so I know uh, you are. I know you're really around here in Europe. So uh, yeah, see you often. I have a feeling that uh, my seed accidentally fell out in Houston when it should have probably fell out somewhere in Europe when I was born. But oh, uh, oh okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, what was uh, was Hell, Hellstar your first band? Had how old were you guys back then? What well, was 1981, 82, I think? Um, we started in, uh, yeah, in 82. We were, uh, we started out as a tribute band, a cover band. We were doing, you know, metal covers. Yeah. And, yeah, so it was 1982. And you were young probably, but. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. And of course, the covers that we were playing were still way too heavy for the club scene. So. Oh, Okay. That's why I ended up playing uh, uh, writing originals. <laughs> cool. Yeah, because because uh, back then the the real the big clubs that you wanted to play, uh, especially like in our hometown, like let's just say the Cardis was the biggest one. Of course, they're gone. They've been gone for years. Those kind of places, <clears throat> although it was it, metal was hit hitting big, the majority of those clubs wanted the kind of bands that uh, would make the people dance. So, you know, you, instead of playing Judas Priest, I'd rather you go in there and play Loverboy, you know, or and Journey and whatever, Foreigner and all typical that Typical America, typical America. Yeah, right, right. So uh, we never got into clubs playing covers anyways because we were stubborn and we were like, well, we're not going to learn that. We're playing Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and fuck you. We're not doing that, you know. So <laughs> I yeah. guess you'll never play the club then. I guess, so I guess we won't. So we did a record and then the rest was history. Then those clubs, same clubs, were the ones that we would sell out every time when we played in our home show, and we stuck it to them when it came to our guarantees. Yeah, you remember us? Turned us away back in the day when we showed you our set list. 
yeah, yeah. we're the same guys. <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so I go now uh, to a, a question I have later in my list, but to stay to the scene, it's better to have that question now. So to go back in that time, please. Yeah, the Houston, scene, Houston Texas scene was like that, you told me. Uh, how is it right now? And uh, are there any young bands around uh, at the moment in uh, Texas? Yeah, like metal bands, you mean, that are like making a name for themselves? Yeah, great new <clears throat> bands. And, you know, I mean, the only new band that I can think of that uh, has uh, made some noise is um, Oceans of Slumber. I think you've heard of them. Uh, uh, what, what kind of uh, style do they play? It's almost like a progressive, very oh. doomy. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I have heard from oh, them. They're, they have a female singer, Oceans of Slumber. They're okay. signed to Social Media, I believe. Okay. Um, they seem to be rattling the cage, and there's a couple of uh, bands popping up here and there. But you know, I've never really seen very many of them go any further than playing the local scene for some reason, even if they are original. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, what's kind of big here and kind of taking over a lot is the tribute bands. That's one thing that's kind of popular here right now. But it's probably because of two that right now um, you can't even really have the nationals coming through anyways. And, you, you know, the touring bands. And, uh, and I guess if you really, you know, since we can't see the real bands, it's not a bad idea to go see an Art Maiden tribute because you can't see Art Maiden right now anyways, you know. But there must be, uh, in, in tribute bands and cover bands, I think they have to be really special. If not, it makes no sense for me. Yeah, well, like, uh, I don't know. I'm sure you were fairly, you were aware of the one that I had. That what, yeah, what, what? it's later in my, later in my uh -huh. list. Uh, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. yeah. Sabbath, that you make, Sabbath. That make, yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, right. okay, cool. <laughs> okay, let's go to the, uh, uh, the memories of the Netherlands because... Uh, uh, your memories uh, go f b uh, way back, and uh, we have many in common friends, like we uh, we already talked about Angel, Lila, uh, uh, Twan, Nancy, Fozzy, uh, just name them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how how are your memories about Netherlands in in general? Uh, you always like to come over, and uh, uh, yeah. Well, you know it. Um, these, these people that you mentioned, you know, of course, in my Ramon and Kirsten from Eindhoven. Oh ah, yeah, I forgot them. That you yeah. you stayed for a long time at the, you stayed many at yeah. that place. Yeah. I forgot. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you you um, you hit it on the nail. I mean, Holland yeah. was Netherlands was my second home for a while. Yeah. You know, and it always is. So mm -hmm. it's just that that's that uh, bond that you have. So I mean, then of course my fondest memories of just about all my visits. Is the, mm -hmm. of course all the shows are great. Seeing all the wonderful friends and and, and uh, people, and so happy all the time. <laughs> and uh, then the after party, uh, when the bitter balls and the frickendels go into the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you have a granddaughter in Holland, Chloe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, my, my niece. <laughs> ah, your niece. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, her. Chloe. Yeah, don't yeah. She's, young one. Yeah. She's a young one. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. cool. Okay, let's go back to the uh, reunion back in uh, 2001 at the Bang Your Head Festival, uh, where you guys uh, to play. And it's you. After that, it seems you're fucking popular in. Oh, sorry, I can't say that on YouTube. Really popular here over here in Europe. But is it? How do you think the difference is between Americans and Europeans uh, compare your music? Well, uh, it's very simple. Um, and 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 this is not uh, saying this for all Americans. We are there. There's plenty of us. Very strong. Very united. Yeah. Uh, but the problem with America is America is so much bigger than Europe. So yeah, you true. only have so many of the real metalheads in every major city. But it, at the same time, so basically, but for the majority of just a normal society, yes, they don't know how to think for themselves. So they just like <laughs> whatever's being shoved down their throats, which is mostly garbage. <clears throat> and then the thing about uh, metal, when you talk about real metalheads, um, especially the Europeans, it's not just a fashion, it's a way of life. So that's the big difference. Yeah. Whereas uh, 
the way that people believe it's an, almost a religion. So it is. It, it's almost like we should have our own country, to be honest. <laughs> and I think that if you were to combine all the metalheads in the world, and and of course it'd probably have to be based in Europe, where the biggest uh, chunk of it is, we'd probably be able to occupy a country the size of Germany. <laughs> You know it's, what I, mean? it, it, I know, and uh, I think it's what you're saying. Uh, you can be half a metalhead. When I was when I was young, my mother always said, "Ah, it goes it goes away, it fades away. It's just yeah. a phase." Uh, uh, you, why are you so uh, obsessed by metal? Why you cannot listen a, a record uh, from time to time? But every day, every hour, it's like possession. You know, it's like a drug, heavy metal. Yeah, now it's it's uh, like I said, that's the best way to describe it. It's a way of life. It's yeah. not a trend. It's not a fashion. It's it's once you really become one real metalhead, you'll always be that same yeah. guy or or girl. And and you know what? <clears throat> it's almost like <clears throat> the way my dad explained it to me too before he passed away, and that's been already I'm going on fifteen years now. <clears throat> but he used to come to all the shows and he enjoyed it. And he okay. he know he noticed it was a way of life. And he said the one thing is he goes think about it. If Glenn Miller or any of those guys were still alive in that big band era from the forties that he used to listen to, <clears throat> and still blast his records out on Saturdays when he's home cleaning house, if they come to town, he is not going to miss that show. He's going to be there. So you see what I'm saying? Is it never faded away? <clears throat> As you get older, the crowds just become older people. And I think it's going to be the same for metal. And, yeah. and it were, in our 80s, we're going to still be going to see what metal band is still around that can perform. <laughs> I, I think it's also cool that there are so many young uh, young people, that there's even that old-fashioned music from the 70s and 80s, and there are still kids, like we say about Chloe, but there are many of them, even oh, yeah. younger, like uh, who, who still like that music and still like that style, and that's cool that there's always new new generation of music metal never dies you know it's like something forever exactly and yeah and, and okay. it's gonna be that way for a long time you know so i i don't think that it's ever this like you said there's a whole new generation taking over yeah. again that's cool okay uh since 82 you are the uh the lead vocalist of hellstar but the list of bands you are in is endless can you please uh, mention some of the most important acts you worked for or where you were may maybe work for in the future? So I know Vicious Rumors, just name them. Just Yeah. Um, I mean, they were all very important to me. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. especially Vicious Rumors. Yeah, that was one that, you know, that when we did the record, it's the record I did with them seemed to have opened the gateway for them to have the yeah. traditional VR uh, come back to life again. Although, of course, nobody was ever going to be Carl Albert, but I think it was the the gateway that mm -hmm. now that's they're continuously out there playing, recording still, you know. So that's a good thing. Uh, but all the bands that it really had, in my life have always been special. Although I never got to record with Flotsam and Jetsam because, in a way, having Eric, the real singer was the better thing to do, anyways. Because I love him so much, yeah. like. And, uh, you know, I just I had to fill in for him on a tour, though, one time. But, you know, he his he had to put the stamp of approval of which singer. And when they told him who, he said, ah, pff, in a heartbeat, go ahead. You, he'll do fine. <laughs> so uh, but Seven Witches was a big one in my life, too. Uh, Destiny Zen was even bigger because it was the rebirth of me coming back to the metal world in the early 90s when metal had died for a while for us over there. Uh, yeah. you know, did two great albums with them. And we're. Uh, where they're getting ready to release the uh, for the, the two albums we did on vinyl. And so they're making a big ruckus about it. We're already talking about maybe doing some shows, uh, you know. And so who knows what can happen with that. Seven Witches is doing a new record right now. Um, yeah. The classic Seven Witches, me and Jack Frost. And we're actually going to call it Back to the Other Side. You know? Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that right out, right out the gate should let the fans know, oh, man, it's going to be the classic. Seven Witches, you know, Passage to the Other Side, Metal, uh, you know, uh, the Year of the Witch uh, kind of songs. And that's exactly what it is going to be. Um, but, uh, yeah, they were all special to me. Killing Machine was one that I really had a lot of hopes for because, I, you know, it had David Ellison and Jimmy DeGrasso and, 
political things sort of killed that band like overnight almost. We never even got to play live or anything, which really sucked. And then, um, uh, you know, Malice, that was that was the one band that I don't know if I, I probably would never want to go back to that. Nothing, nothing as far as bad things, but, you know, two of the main members are gone. So, I mean, you know, what do you do? You know, Mick, he passed away, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, so it, there's hard, there's no original members really left. So it doesn't make sense to me. And um, that's like a tribute band. I'll call yeah, band. It, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Right. So uh, but um, other than that, just about all the bands that I've been in where I've all had a special pl place in my heart. Uh, some that, you know, are like I said, are going to continue. Uh, which, yeah, it, it's endless. Which, yeah, which is this going to, you know, like I said, we're going to put a new album out this year. And so, you know, that's going to bring us back out of the grave again. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, but they all had a special place in my heart. Shadow Keep? And Shadow, how could I forget that? Was yeah, I, I, yeah. They're great. Yeah, we did. And we actually got to go out and play shows. Yeah. Now, what's going to happen with that? I don't know. It seems like they... Um, the, the the husband and wife, you know, they're, they're, they're it's a team, and you know, I think they took a, they took a little bit of a beating financially on that last record, and expected a lot more. And of course, the label didn't hardly do anything for them. So, but we we did manage to come out and do a few shows with that lineup, which was great. Yeah, and one of them was in the Netherlands at the Cult Club, or, uh, Art Cult Club, but that was way up north. Ah, okay. My my colleague was probably there. He yeah. uh, we what worked together. It, I think we did the Little Devil too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you play off the Little Devil, my hometown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so back to uh, some question. Uh, what were for you? What were the best of your career years of your career, and why? Uh, the best. Yeah, the best years of your career, and, and why do you think that? Well, I would say that you know that. Best years were right around when Hellstar reunited and I was in Vicious Rumors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would, but I would say starting around 2002. Yeah. Till, I mean, now. Uh, I think that was a great with period. The, with the exception of the yeah. pandemic right now. Though these are the best years right now. Even better than the 80s by far. I mean, so yeah. And then you would think that it would be the other way around, but. No, no, I was there in 2003 at, uh, for example, at the Dynamo. Uh, uh, it was uh, How Do I Bedankt Festival in Eindhoven, mm -hmm. where you played in, I think it was 2003, and uh, where I saw Hellstar there, and you were playing often around around two, uh, that early, mid-2000s. Right. It was, a great, it was a great period, I think, yeah. yeah I agree but, with that. Yeah, totally, yes. Okay. Uh, tell me about some very other important project of you, Sabbath to the Sped, Sabbath, because uh, I think this tribute is very special. It's one of the best tribute bands in, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> wow! Well, and two great you. bands, and uh, and you as a singer. Well, how, can, how can you go wrong with the two grand grandfathers of heavy metal combined? Yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah right, that's why. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean. Um, and the thing with Sabbath Judas Sabbath, we have uh, we have, we have scaled down from playing quite as often. Um, and the reason, and again, this is going back to that that what I told you that how Houston has, especially in Houston, has become the tribute band king. Of, you know, of the, and so there's too many of people now doing, you know, tribute to the same metal icons. And you see, I started Sabbath Judas Sabbath 20 years ago. And it was rare, and it was a novelty, and it was a beautiful thing. Then it what look what happened. It blew up to become worldwide. You know, I had a chapter in Germany, a chapter in the Netherlands, the very first European chapter from Slovenia, which I love my boys from Slovenia and girl. <laughs> then yeah. I had a chapter, in, yeah. So you see, and then I had chapters all over America. So cool. it it was became a, a a really special thing. Then when I started noticing all the too many of the same tribute bands to the metal icons here, it became an overkill. And I really started kind of getting a little discouraged. And so, um, and now asking me about a very special project, well, this one might blow you away. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
during the pandemic, uh, right when, you know, in March, I guess is when we got shut down and we had to go into complete lockdown and then nobody was, you know, you weren't allowed to go anywhere, do nothing uh, except go to the grocery store and the liquor store, which was good, you know, so. <laughs> it's still <laughs> out in Holland North. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So you see. Uh, After we, several uh, hours, then it's closed. Oh, wow. So you see, we, we were allowed to go to the stores and all that. And then, mm. and then I sat in here in this room where I'm doing this interview right now in front of my computer. And I started to think about what could I do that would be different than all any other tribute band out there. And I said, what is your other passion in life? You know, so I talk to myself a lot. So you, you I'm scared. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe I'm, uh, what do you call that? Um, split personality. <laughs> so, and I said, you know, you love 80s new wave. Yeah, I love it too. But, okay. Well then now check this out. Okay, take cool. 80s new wave and take those songs and turn them into metal songs. And what do you right. have? You have metal wave. And that's oh, wow. what the project is. And we just, did our debut show in Austin, Texas, okay. this past Saturday. And let me tell you something. Those people just went bananas. That I mean, you were seeing people headbanging. You were seeing people dancing. You didn't, They didn't know what to do. Because like, oh, my God, they're playing psychedelic furs now. And you could see people looking at each other with their mouths open like, oh, that's that song. You know, and, and we do it metal. So... Oh. Matter of fact, there's a, the page is up. You can go check it out. Uh, there's two complete songs already released. And then there's a promo trailer that has snippets of four songs total. So take Depeche Mode, uh, Psychedelic Furs, The Cure, Echo and the Bunny Man, Peter Murphy, Bauhaus, Sushi and the Banshees, Tears for Fears. I can go on down the line. You know where I'm Okay. Going. There's a mercy. I, I and, love that music. And picture it done with a Hellstar flavor. Because three guys from Hellstar are in the band, and Larry Berrigan is one of the main writer for Hellstar. Well, the only other original member. See, when when I came up with this idea, yeah, I had to think. Well, wait a minute. How are you going to find these members that actually love this music passionately, but also are metalheads? Because I didn't want somebody doing it just because it was something to do. I wanted somebody to come in and go. I actually love this music, yeah. and I I could see where we could turn it into metal. Well, Larry was one of the first ones to step up. Dude, I'm in. I go, I go, really? He goes, dude, remember we went to saw Depeche Mode together in 1985 for the first time on the Black Celebration Tour. And I was like, yeah, dude. And uh, Bauhaus, Peter Murphy, I turned you on to him. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. You did. <laughs> so there it was right there under my nose. My main member from Hellstar, my brother for 30 something years was is now where you. Yeah, where this metal wave is our new thing. And as a matter of fact, Massacre is interested in signing it. Ooh. So, it, well, right. uh, you know, of course, we want to shop around and see who would be interested in it. But also someone that's going to passionately love it because I think that they this would blow up huge in Europe for sure. <laughs> I hope you come to Europe with this music. I know, oh, yeah. I, you know, these bands like uh, Sister of Mercy, The Cure, uh, they're all pure. They're, many people love them, you know. Uh, oh, my, yeah. fav my favorite song is always The Forest. By the key. Oh, yeah. I hope yeah, you've yeah. got to play that one. Oh, yeah, it's, we are. Yeah, it's yep, a great played. song. So yeah. many. Oh, I get chicken pox when I listen to that song, you know. Oh, yeah. It's so yeah. great. Kind of yeah. Like, um, we're, we're sticking to the more darker songs because those are the ones that are a little bit more natural to turn into metal. So, uh -huh. you know, we can't get too happy. Like, you know, right now we're even debating on a couple of songs from The Fix that I like, whereas, you know, the bass player says dude this can totally be metal where larry's thinking like oh, i don't know man it's not it wasn't in my you know it was it's all in major key so it's you know, I have to rearrange it and i go well <clears throat> we'll get around to it but i mean red skies at night come on i i hear that metal right right out the gate so you know that's my new thing and i'm very cool. excited about it um and it's starting to take off like a rocket right now so just because it's different you know no one's there has been a band that's done it uh, but not the way we're doing it and that was the band uh, um, Atrocity. They did something called Works 80s or something like that, two records. And that's why Thomas is saying that he thinks this would be huge because apparently <laughs> though that little project they did just for fun and games sold over 250,000 records. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, right. That's a gold record these days, you know. So. <laughs>
but it's 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 stupid when when you are a metalhead you 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 have to appreciate you i think it's normal to appreciate other styles too you know if it's real music by made by heart you know then it's okay you know if it's no oh, plastic yeah. uh, plastic garbage uh, yeah you know <clears throat> exactly and, I, and about uh, the wave music uh you talked about tears for fears and the cure yeah, I know which songs. I don't think you're gonna play "Shout Out Friday and My Love" from the Cure. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, uh, no, Tears but, for Fears is gonna do everybody's rule. Everybody wants to rule the world, and uh, yeah. uh, there's other darker ones they have. But the Cure, yeah. the, the Forest, and Lullaby makes a lot of sense. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are those are great. Yeah. Spider Man is coming here for dinner tonight. <laughs> I'm curious. I want to. I, I when when you yeah, play around, I'll, I'm, I'm there. We, when we get I'll, done with the interview, I'll send you the link to the uh, Facebook page, and you can check out the uh, songs. And I stuff. will. I will. I love. I will love wave music. So yeah. Right. Awesome. Okay. Uh, you recently released a new album, Clad in Black, uh, mm -hmm. by the, also by Massacre Records. You were earlier talking about. Right. Are you happy? Are you happy with the result? And how's the feedback by friends and press? Uh, by fans and press at the moment. Right now, everybody's really digging it. Yeah, you know, I mean, and it, it doesn't matter how good the damn record is. You know, you're always going to have those haters. Always. <laughs> so, you know, I'll, so you know, you learn to ignore. Out of the five hundred likes and wonderful comments, you learn to ignore the two that are like, "This sucks." And blah blah. They need a new singer, and <laughs> oh, no. you know, you laugh and go, "Dude." You know, you know, yeah, they need a new singer. And I'm thinking like, well, you know what? Why don't you record that song? Let's see what you would do with it, okay? Yeah, and it's just true. some fucking frustrated guy that doesn't probably even play any music at all, you know? And so, but anyways, who cares? But no, it, it, for the most part, everybody loved the ballad we put out in uh, October. Everybody loves this new thing. Few people not saying in a complaining way, why was it done the way it was with only two new songs and then more covers again and uh, you know or three new songs actually because they did include the ballad on it as well as well but my explanation to that and why did you re-release you know an album previously that you just did and there's a reason for that so i don't know if that's in the interview and you wanted to save it or if it's all concluded in here so yes i will go ahead and explain all that to everybody the reason why we did this is because when we you know, we started to think about a new project, you know, a new label and everything else. I said, you know, I want to take things a little slower this time with how we release things. We have never released a single. So the seven inch vinyl was was considered an official single, you know, like the old days, you know, it, and it's and then then I told Thomas at the label, this is my plan. And, and he and but everything I said, he agreed to. And I said, then we put out an EP with two more, three more new songs, and we mm -hmm. do three more covers, and we give them a little bit more. He goes, I like that, I like that, because people like to collect things, so they become special edition type things, you know? Yeah. Then we put out the full album, and, you know, and of course it's going to be those songs that, that they've already heard, but then they're going to get like seven, eight more when the real record comes out. But in this, in this pattern, you see, Single hit October, February at the end of this month, Clad in Black comes out, and then September of this year again, full album. Now do you see where I'm going? So Hellstar is constantly on your mind now instead of like, yeah. what happened to those guys? Yeah, <laughs> you never. That's a really bad thing. You never, never been forgotten. Forget. Uh, that people forget you that's something you never you always have to be in the picture it, it, well it uh, and the other way to put it is the way that uh, we are us americans say out of sight out of mind you know yeah. what i mean you know so basically um this was a way to to kind of keep things out coming out and people would stay excited and be mm -hmm. like oh man another thing they're gonna put out wow you know and then oh my god you know and then that's gonna take its little course and then all of a sudden, the pre there'll be some things all on the internet or social media. New uh, Hellstar full album in the works now, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. They're, these guys aren't stopping. Well, yeah. And just think about it. When you start doing the, when you start doing that, put out an album every two or three years. Jesus, you know, people are already forgotten. You, 
even the lost fans because they're like well i guess those guys are dead or whatever you yeah know? <laughs> it's it's the same like you say uh out of sight out of mind yeah. it's the same like uh uh, we are starting uh, that it would haters or hate comments or whatever or dislikes. From um, my a good friend of mine told me, if you don't have haters, you you you're nothing. You know, you yeah every yeah you you need haters to be loved. You know, or of the upper sides. You know, no haters is no love. You know, yeah. Uh, you can- then you mean then you mean nothing. You know, then you are you know, not important because nobody. Uh, recognized you because you're not you're not important, you know. So, and if people hate you, then you are at least some someone. Right. Well, yeah. Then there's a, there's another old saying: bad press is better than no press. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, yeah. Because I have a record label too, and my fr- and my friend said we don't care if we r- get bad reviews, because a bad review is always better than no review. Exactly. They're still you're still being talked about. <laughs> I, I sometimes I bought uh, yeah, in the eighties uh, Art Shock. They never liked uh, the German band so much. So, but I liked that. So I was reading the Art Shock, and when some Andre or Mike wrote a bad review, and I said, mm, maybe it's something for me, you know, like yeah. this, you know, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. It, yeah. Because so then you said it's old fashioned. It's uh, uh, it's done ten thousand times, and I said, ah, mm, oh, maybe, maybe it's for me. Something I like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's why. Good way of thinking, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, you're always on the road for many decades. How is it uh, for you to deal with this COVID situation? And you and you cannot, at the fact, you cannot pre- present your new album through touring. It. Uh, well, it 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 has it has struck a nerve in me as far as like God, and this sucks. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean. But what can you do? That's just it. What can you do? There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. You know, uh, it's just a horrible situation. You know, I mean, yeah, this is going to, it would, the record would probably do better if we could get out there and support it, but we can't. So, yeah. but I think with people knowing that um, and now relying more on online sales for just about everything anyways, but I think that we're going to get a lot of support when it hits. You know, people are going to be like, well, if you can't see the band. May as well go buy their records because you'd be surprised how many fans wait to buy the record directly from you while you're on tour. See, so you, and you sell a lot of the records like that, too. Well, now that they know that we can't come, the online sales are going to shoot sky high because well, we're not going to be able to see them at the show and buy. And they want to. And the reason why they like doing that, which makes a lot of sense. God, I want to buy the the record, the shirt, everything there, because that way they can sign it, you see. Yeah. So now it's kind of like, wow, well, well, but I still want the record, so I'm going to buy it, you know. And I'm thinking hopefully by the time we put the full record out, though, that we will be able to come out and play. I, I don't know. I've, I've heard through different mixed feelings about everything that some people are saying, yes, 2021, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do some things. Then I hear from other promoters and agents, no, man, we're even looking at 2022, maybe even longer than that. And I'm like, what? Yeah. That's a thing. Because of some new strain taking over or whatever, I don't know. I'm afraid that uh, the conditions will be suck, will suck too after the COVID because all the clubs are nearly bankrupt. And uh, right. I'm also afraid for that. Yeah. I think you have to, uh, it's the old old 80s way, pay to play, you know, like you did in the 80s, selling tickets before your ve- before the venue. I know the stories. I think yeah. uh, s- or, sad things like that, yeah. Or it'll go back to our door deals where, yeah. you know, yeah, you know, you get uh, 100% of the door, I get the bar, blah, 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 let's see what happens, you know. I don't bring them on. Don't bring them on memory on uh, on my on uh, on uh, plans. You know, don't talk about it. But because otherwise they see it's a oh that's a good thing. You know, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's no, keep no, it no. quiet. I'll you know, yeah, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, some other. What are you up to these days? What are you doing at the moment uh, when you cannot tour? You write songs. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we're just uh, writing material. That's what we're writing. New, you know, we're getting close to having enough songs for the new record. Um, like I said, working on the metal wave thing. I've been recording a lot, so because we know that the metal wave thing is looking more to become almost like a signed act instead of just a tribute act. 
as we learn a new song, we just all learn it at home. Uh, then we all go to Larry's and record it, actually, and, and, you know, a real recording of it. And we have a guy that Larry mixes it, and we have a guy that masters them. So we got four mixed and mastered. Uh, I'm going to Larry Saturday, as a matter of fact, to record uh, three more songs. And um, Bauhaus, uh, Bella Lugosi's Dead, um, uh, Pet Cemetery by Ramones. Oh, yeah. that, I love that song. <laughs> it's from the classic movie wait from 89. Our, oh, yeah, man, wait till I love you hear our song. version of it. Yeah, our oh, version of it. It's really good, yes. Yeah. And uh, the I other one. Be oh, yeah. In a bed cemetery. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You're going to love awesome. it. It's awesome. Yeah. And uh, Rain by the Cult. So, ah, yeah, oh, the cult. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just kind of keeping them recording as much as we can. Um, then when we get to 10 songs, then, you know, I'll, I'll start deciding what's label i want to go to there was a french label that's interested too and i don't know there's other there's other people out there that kind of want to they're interested in it but we'll see massacre might make sense because hell stars already there seven witches is already there kind of keeps everything in the family you know you know them you know how they work and uh yeah exactly right yeah. okay uh well we're going to an end but uh we will meet someday hopefully Again, um, yes, yeah. For so. a for a Dutch for a Tilburg scrobbelach, you know the drink. Uh, you know, uh, drink the drink, oh, yeah. the little snaps from Tilburg. I guess that's my favorite. It comes in the brown bottle, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, the little devil always shakes them. You know. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I want to ask you a question because you already talked about uh, favorite heart, uh, your your favorite bands. And uh, normally I would ask the question, my final question would be your top five all-time favorite hard and heavy classics, but I'm going to turn it over. I'm said three classic wave albums and three classic metal albums. Oh, okay. So uh, we'll start with um, Depeche Mode, Black Celebration. Yeah. Your Incintegration. <laughs> um, and I want to say the best of Peter Murphy. Okay, that's that's that's, for the, that's for the for the yes yeah and for the metal. Yes, for metal it is um, classic. Oof, would have to be taken by force by Scorpions. Okay. Um, Sad Wings of Destiny, Judas Priest. Good choice. And um, number of the beast are made. I can fight myself. And what do you say about you? Say set wings of destiny. Uh, the uh, that's the first record from Judas Priest who sound like Judas Priest. You know because that yeah. was a uh, previous album, but it didn't sound like Priest. But set wings of destiny is the real Priest for me. Uh, I yeah. agree with well, that. That set the bar for them. Basically, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, yeah. some final words from you to uh, our viewers. You mean to my family? To your family? <laughs> to Ramon, Kirsten, uh, Twan, and Nancy, down, uh, Angel, down, down, uh, all just, everyone. Yeah, our agent Herion, you know. So uh, he's way up in the north. Yeah. So everybody. Ah, Arian, yeah, Arian, yeah. I know him. Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah, with the curly yeah. hair. Yeah, big guy. Uh, yeah, redhead. Yeah. yeah. And you remember uh, Peter Blom from the Rambler Bar? Of course. Peter was my buddy, man. Oh, I but, straight, huh? Well, all those people and yeah. Little Devil and, uh, you know, just everybody that you, you guys know that. I know. I know them all. <laughs> I know them all. I uh, just want to say take care of yourselves. I love y'all. Well, you get emotional. That's a good <laughs> thing. We, we love yeah. you, James. We love you, too, I mean, you, I miss you guys. I do. I really do. Right. And uh, we're going to see each other again. Don't worry. I know we will. I know we will. Just got to be patient. We wait. We wait till you come back. Then we come all to yeah. the show. Everybody I, comes to every show. I want to thank you for the really good interview. Very good questions. Very entertaining. You know, you'd be surprised how some of them are. <laughs> they're just like, why, why are you asking me that? <laughs> just wondering, what are you eating at the moment? Uh, I'm not eating anything. I'm doing an interview with you. 
<laughs> what? what will ask someone ask you that? Yeah, well, well, like some day, sometimes I ask you what's your favorite food, and you know that's okay too. But you know, it's just yeah. it's off the subject of music. You know, <laughs> speaking of off the subject of music, look at my child here. Say hi, Laco. Hi. 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 No, but I think Say it's hi. very. Hi. I I think it's very important <laughs> to go back to your. Uh, little bit to your me memories of of Holland because I know you were a long time away from t from Holland now and from Europe yeah. and Germany so I think let's uh, put all the friends and people who are, everybody knows James Rivera everybody from uh, the most metal ads know and I think yeah let's involve everyone in the in the interview you know like everyone who's part of the 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 music and your French friends I I want to involve everyone and keep some memories like back to the Dynamo days and everything yeah you know. so there was a, this was a great idea to do a video Erie here I don't you know my friend Erie <laughs> he uh, well he lives I think he lives somewhere a little south of Eindhoven but he Me he's also. really oh. he's be, like he was like Ramon's best friend I think um that, Ooh, that I know that good friends what's Erie name? Erie Erie mm -hmm. But anyways, the funny the funny story about Erie. So that's why every time on when I play in, in the Netherlands and he's at a show, I always have to say this on stage to make him laugh. But he lived in Houston for a long time. Okay. Right, and 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 uh, we that's how we first met. Yeah. And then he moved back, and he's married now with some kids. Beautiful. He's got a beautiful family, but he was here for work, I guess. And he started coming to all the metal shows. So he was a big supporter of the scene. This was around two thousand. One two thousand and all to but to but the, the good years you were talking about, you know. Yeah, yeah. Moved back. it was a good time. But, and, and, a second and never, Yeah, never in in our lives have we ever you know encountered this, or at least I never did. But when you called him at his house, you know, like typically when we answer the phone, somebody calls, we just go hello, you know, that's it, you know, like hey James, hey what's going on guy, hey how you doing, blah blah blah. But eerie, <laughs> every time he answered the phone. He'd always go, Erie here? <laughs> like, yeah, I know it's Erie. I'm calling you Erie. <laughs> who else Ooh. would it be? <laughs> I'm thinking about who you mentioned, but uh, I know I know uh, some good friends of Ramon, like Antoine and... Uh, yes, guess, of uh, course, the satanic uh, guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the satanic guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he shaved his hair uh, now. Yeah, yeah, uh, he did. Right, yeah, yeah. he did, yeah. Yeah, cool those, those, those are good cool people, guy. man. Those are some all these good people, man, that uh, I miss and I haven't seen in so long. And it, it's I I have I all I know is that when we get to come back, it's mm -hmm. gonna be one hell of a damn party. You know that. <laughs> and like guys like Michelle, Michelle, and uh, yeah. and uh, Marcel, and uh, oh, Bianca, yeah. Bianca, Jos, Jos, Femke, everyone. You know, uh, <laughs> Dio. Oh, and, from, what Together, Ludi from the used on the rock. Ah, Ludi, yeah, Ludi is a great I guy. And, they, and, the they, and Theo, Sam, and Theo Samson, uh, from from the Rock Temple. Theo, uh, my my friends that own the Art Cult Club up in the north. They're, they're great, beautiful family up there. It's just it, it's just endless. In, yeah. in such a small little country, you have I have more family than I do in all of Europe. <laughs> uh, Germany, but, have, uh, I you know, also probably but Christian Anstey. Christian yeah. Ansting from Duna. Yeah. Chris, of Christian. Christian. Uh, Christian oh, yeah, Ansting. My, yeah, of course. Well, you know, I got, well, then, then I, and now you're opening another can of worms about my German family, <laughs> which I have plenty of that. Yeah. So, they are great. But, too. Yeah, but he, he claims both countries because he's so close to the Netherlands, I guess. You know? <laughs> uh, 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 Christian. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's not far. I mean, he came no, to from Dortmund, the shows. Area, Dortmund area. Yeah, Lunen. It's uh, it's Lunen, just right. Yeah, it's, but basically, we're we're always an hour from Eindhoven, you know. So, but yeah, very <laughs> very guy, good. One of my best friends in Germany. He's yeah, awesome. he's awesome, man. Of course, Oliver from Keep It True. Uh, we see we're gonna yeah. start all this. Yeah, Volker. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Stoney. you yeah. might know Stony. Stony from the Rupert. Stony. Yeah, of course, Stoney. I do. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Boy, great guy too. Anyway, <laughs> that's stuff about it. Okay, that's uh, yeah. We that's have some about Holland and Europe and everyone. I, every all of y'all know I love you. If I didn't mention your name, it's just that it would take me another three hours on this interview. So, but you know I love y'all. <laughs> We've got one man I work together with a lot, Johnny from Belgium. Oh yes, of course, yes. He's a nice guy. Yeah, He's totally. a very nice guy, Italian guy very. from origin. Yes, he is, man. Totally cool. Very, very <laughs> nice guy. Loved him. <laughs> Uh, he did a lot of shows for us, actually. Yeah, he is a nice guy, very nice guy. 
Oh, and he yeah. believes in feeding you very well too. Woo! It's like I go Sorry? play. Belt. He believes in feeding you like really good stuff. Like I mean, in other words, best, like you go best one, three, huh? Yeah. So I always look forward to going to play Belgium. But the other reason why I don't want to go is because I know that once I just do those two shows for him, I'm gonna gain five pounds. <laughs> two days <laughs> and the funny thing the show where he has the best food is the club where he don't get the most people but he has the best he has a great sound guy kun has a great uh stage he has a great uh, kitchen with great food uh, right it's hard to get there in, in the middle of nowhere but uh yeah, johnny always make the best of it it's a great guy oh awesome and of course i can't forget about metal mike uh, yeah from uh shock all right, he's been around. I always supported you. Yeah, and last but not least, and I know there's more, but come on, Philip and Alcatraz, and that that whole those guys, dude, they know how to put on a festival. Now you talk about really getting the red carpet treatment. Oh yeah, all the way down to the hotel you stay in, and it, it's just like <laughs> it's like what I don't know. I didn't know that I was considered Elvis Presley over here, but I'll take it. You know, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah, thank you very much. You take care, Marco. God bless you, and you, you you stay safe, okay? You take care of yourself, you and your family. Keep up the good work. And uh, as soon as we get off, I'll send you that link to the Metal Wave page, okay? And it's 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 called James Rivera's Metal Metal Wave. You can't miss it. But I'll send you the link, and then you can check out the tune the tunes and stuff like that, okay? Thank you very much, James. It was a All pleasure right. to talk to you, and I hope we can chat uh, uh, even longer in the in uh, in the bar at yeah, the, with well, a beer yeah. with a beer and a oh, well, nice yeah. frikandel with us. Yeah, and those conversations can last all night. Those are the good ones. <laughs> okay, yeah, we involve everyone. We go a big group of talking and uh, we yeah. drink. Uh, yeah, with the good music on the close. background. The, yeah, the bar will never close. <laughs> never, never, never. Yeah, never. Okay, man, you take care, okay? And everybody else, much. please, my Netherlands family, take care of yourself, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you very much.